I love it. I mean, I, I didn't have a lot of art education as a kid. I had it in seventh grade and then none in high school. And then my sophomore year in college, I was an advertising major. I had to take an art class and discovered it. The teacher, he sent us all with a supply list and we had to paint the picture of this man. It was like just a photocopy of this man. And I was amazed I was able to do it. And ever since then, I've just loved it. I will think about a painting for a while. You know, I might see a photograph, I might see a scene, I might be drawn to um, a particular flower, and it just, it stays in my head until I start working it out on a canvas. I'm very drawn to florals, and if you saw my mother or grandmother's house, you would understand why I grew up around a lot of like bright, colorful floral patterns and wallpaper and fabric. And, and also they wore a lot of, uh, you know, like lily clothes and uh, floral wallpapers and fab chintz fabrics. I think it just got inside of me. Um, and so I feel very comfortable painting flowers and very loose, it's intuitive. And then as far as the landscapes go and still lifes, I, I enjoy doing those. You know, I, I love where we live. I love the big expanse of sky and the magical colors. That's just me painting what I love. I think that's what it boils down to, whether it's the flowers or a pear or a scene outside, it's, it really boils down to me point, painting things that make me happy and make me feel good inside. I paint in oils and acrylics. A year and a half ago when someone said, saw my florals and said, you should really try oils because I think the way that you paint, it was someone that saw me painting. The way you push the paint around on the canvas, I think you'd really love how loose the oils are. It's a different process though. It's, it's much slower. So with the acrylic painting, you do a painting and then you move on to the next painting. <laughs> you might start another one, you might have a couple started, but with the oil paintings, you almost have to always have a lot going on or else it's frustrating because you have to wait so much, such a long time in between painting them. I'll start with a photo to get the structure of the flowers or the, um, or the landscape. After I have it initially down, I usually don't look at it again, the, the photograph, because I'm more concerned with the color and the form and the brush strokes than I am in an accurate depiction of whatever it is I'm painting. That's when I get more inventive and where, where the painting becomes my own. I've always been drawn to the German Expressionists their bright use of color, thick, thick brush strokes. You can see that it's a painting. It never looks like a photograph. The color and the, the brush strokes give a lot of feeling to the painting. Sometimes I'll say, what is this painting missing? And one of my sons will say, well, it isn't gunked up enough yet. Meaning <laughs> I, I don't have enough paint on it. It needs more, more body to it. I love the work of Richard Diebenkorn. I, I feel fortunate that I had that art history background because I do look at a lot of, of art. That inspires me, going to a museum and seeing art. You always know that it's an artist looking at a painting because you get about, they, they get about this close to the painting, almost your nose is touching uh, the painting because you want to see how it's done. You can figure it out, like figure the the puzzle out. How was the, how did they how did they do that? And I'm always amazed at the artist that can just indicate something with just one stroke. So with the shingles, I work in pastels, and the way that that came about was in our old house. We had a shed that the previous owners had left lots of old shingles in there. And I was used to taking my French easel and all my paints and going to the beach and painting plein air. It's quite a, a lot to haul and then set up. And 
I was going into the shed to get something and I saw them and I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to, maybe I'm just gonna bring one of those and I brought pastels instead. I went out to um, North Beach and I loved it. The texture and the waves shine through in the, in the wood. My grandmother used to have a little painting on a piece of driftwood that was in her kitchen that was from done by an artist here on the Cape, and I always loved that, that little painting. So I think I must have thought of that, too, when I saw those shingles in there. I've been teaching art for about 30 years now. I started at two parochial schools on the North Shore. And then when I moved to Chatham, my mom and I opened up an art studio for kids, which was wildly successful in the summertime, but very difficult to pay the rent as far as a year-round basis goes. And now I'm fortunate enough to be the art teacher at Chatham Elementary School. We're so fortunate because Chatham has a gorgeous art classroom. I love this art. You like coming to class? Yeah. I love, I love art. Um, I've, t I've done art for two, two years now. Yeah, I sketch and I also like painting. Historically, we've done them a great disservice in that we give them these awful plastic brushes and watercolors. Watercolor is so difficult and so unforgiving and a cheap piece of paper and then said something like um, draw a giraffe but not given them a photograph of a giraffe so they're set up for failure so i mean one of the great things about being an artist and teaching art is i know you know it's problem solving is what art really is and so i know how to go about getting them there what's your favorite part of the class um probably when we sketch stuff and make collages. At my house I have like a paint set and I usually like paint a lot. So I learned to have a draw since first grade and I'm glad we have a art teacher because she can like help me draw stuff that I don't know how to draw yet. Yeah, I learned a lot that I didn't know and now I know how to make my drawings better. My belief what you want to do to be a successful art teacher is to Give them enough structure and direction in the beginning so that when you get to about three quarters of the way through the project, you can just let them do their own thing. And that's when the magic happens. I mean, that's when their paintings or drawings take on a whole different personality and become so unique. So you can have the the same project, everybody's doing the same project, and when you hang them up, they're all completely different because they've been able to put in their own uh, mark making and all those things that are inside of us that make our artwork unique. The art's important? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think it's important? I think it's, cool. it's important because it lets um, kids uh, create their own artistic abilities by expressing their feelings in different art. So like for painting and different projects that we do. There was an art teacher at SMU whose name was Barnaby Fitzgerald and he was right out of out of the salons in Paris. He had like the coat that uh, Monet was always photographed wearing and a handlebar mustache, a little goatee and he had a very big ego, and um, he only taught upper level classes. So you knew what you were getting into when you had a class with Barnaby Fitzgerald. And I was taking a class with him. We were outside drawing the Rodin sculpture, um, the three graces of three women. We would have been out there for 12 hours um, working on it and he came out with a gallon of white paint and a big paintbrush and he just started going up to each person and whiting out areas of their drawing. It was horrifying to me and shocking to me but it did teach me something about he was trying to get the point across about 
not getting too precious with your work, you know, and it's good to make mistakes. Sometimes the best stuff comes from mistakes. Sometimes it's great to just sort of mess things up intentionally because when you break it down and build it back up again, that's when you're really getting into kind of the, the meat of a painting. It's hard for the kids to know when a painting is done. A painting is never done in the eyes of an artist and it's one reason why I don't have a lot of my own paintings in my house because there's this tendency to be working them and reworking them in your head all the time like oh I, I should have done that or wonder how it would look if I did that I mean you could drive yourself mad <clears throat> doing that at some point you just have to say it is what it is and I've just got to love this one for what it is and now I'm moving on to the next one There's very few students that are, you know, that were born really with great drawing technique. Some of them do, but most of that has to be taught. Um, but the other students always measure themselves against those students that are excellent at drawing. So what you want to do is uh, offer lots of different media to them. If you're not great at drawing, maybe you're great at uh, paper mache or working with clay or oil pastels or collage so I, I throw th throughout the course of the year I really try and, and offer everything to them I do a lot of art history with the children I think it's great for them it just gives them such a broader view and appreciation for art it helps them I feel like with their own art it's great for them to see that not all paintings look like a photograph because in their head, they think of the Mona Lisa or anything by Da Vinci, that's a painting in their, in their head. So when you show them Picasso and you show them um, abstract artists and just Jackson Pollock, you know, it's great for them to see that art can be anything and it, it frees them up a lot. I'm all about building up their self-esteem because I do think that when you feel uh, good about yourself and you feel like you're doing something, when you're happy and you're having fun, you are so much more successful. It's so much fun. <laughs> They're ex they love art so much at that age. It's just play and fun for them, so that makes it so fun for me. It's the thing that I think artists strive for for the rest of their career is to be that pure and free and open uh, with their art like like they are when they're little. My favorite quote is Picasso said every child is an artist and and the hard part is becoming one when you're, you're an adult and I I completely uh, live by that as I'm teaching. I do 100% believe that every child is an artist and they all have the capacity to be really successful in art. I think art brings people great joy and happiness. It expands their perspective on different people and cultures and, I mean, obviously I love it. People have told me that my artwork makes them happy. And I can't think of a better compliment than that. If I'm making somebody feel good or making their, making their house brighter and more colorful, then I've done a good job. <laughs>